These earphones are unlike anything else you've heard or seen. They go to extremes, both positive and negative ones. They use proprietary, in-house developed technologies that you can't find anywhere else. Flare Audio e-Prototype. Let's take a closer look. Build quality and comfort. They come with a thin, rubbery cable that doesn't feel very premium, but at least it doesn't tangle up so easily, like some aftermarket IEM cables I have tried in the past. It ends with a single-ended 3.5mm slim plastic connector. There is no way to use them balanced, and for worse, the cable is non-detachable. It's just a cable, and what's good about it is that it is pretty lightweight and seems durable enough. Plus, on the website, they said that they stress tested it. Enough about it. Please leave a like to support the video and let's move to the actual earpiece build quality, as it's interesting to say the very least. They're 3D printed, and you may be like, what the hell, I don't want expensive high-end IEMs to be 3D printed. And that's fair, totally fair. Flare Audio has a model that is both cheaper and fully made out of metal, if you care about it. But this is a prototype a proof of concept made to show off what their technology is capable and to support further research and development. Moreover, as you can imagine, it's not printed with a standard chip of filament on a regular 3D printer. They use professional-grade equipment and materials to produce them. The final result is a decently rigid filling capsule with a smooth texture and no roughness that is usually associated with 3D printing. As a bonus, they are lightweight, unlike their full metal brother, and if it's important to you, they are not made in China. They produce them in their headquarters in the United Kingdom. Their shape is the weirdest I have ever seen, and that's for a reason. They research the internal shape of our ears and its effect on the distortion. The effect of our ears on the frequency response is common knowledge at this point, really. But they wanted to go further, exploring the distortion produced by the human ear shape, and realized that our ears can distort the sound by as much as 20%. That's why they developed their mirror image sound technology. So their shape is weird to overcome the issues inside our ears. At least that's what they say. Is it even comfortable though? I didn't experience any major comfort-related issues while using them, but due to their shape being somewhat unusual, it may vary from person to person. As my ears are internally slightly asymmetrical, I faced one problem. I had to position the left earpiece in a very specific range of depth and angle, otherwise the sound would be greatly attenuated in the ear, which is something I have yet to encounter with other in-ear monitors. Nevertheless, once I got the fit right, I could use them for extended periods without any significant discomfort. What you get in the box is a pack of replacement tips in different sizes and a hard carrying case. It has some stealth flare branding and feels very solid. I would absolutely trust it to protect my portable audio gear. It should fit some tiny dongle beside your earphones. But if you need something bigger, Flare Audio offers a large hard carrying case that is rectangular, feels even better than the tiny model due to its softer internal finish and is very affordable. It should fit around two to three pairs of IEMs with no issue. If you're lucky, a dongle or two tiny ones are also very likely to make it inside at the same time. It's just perfect for traveling. They are tuned in a very, very specific way. You will either love it or hate it. I definitely would not recommend buying it as your only IM with this kind of tuning. But as a complementary IM, its tuning is unlike anything else I have heard. Although, as always, people's preferences vary, and to accommodate that, Flare Audio is offering a 100-day return window, which is just amazing to see. They are so sure of their products, and they are not forcing customers to own them if they don't like them. Please subscribe to this channel if you're watching this video so far. And let's start with the base. The e-prototypes have, in a way, the best low-end out of any IEM or even headphones I have ever tried. There is a lot of bass and it's keeping its integrity very well. The bass is extremely good layered, resolving and so punchy, no matter the source I paired it with. I think these earphones must have met the Hyphaman HER9 at some point and took some inspiration from their duality and bipolarity. But they have taken it even further by pushing the extremes of both the positive and negative sides. 
Either way, the base is definitely on the good side. If I were to pick one single thing that the Flare Audio E prototypes do well, way above its league, it would be the base region. It hits hard, doesn't fall apart, even despite its amount, and extends extraordinarily low, with some audible roll-off occurring in the 20 some hertz region. The mids don't fit my preferences very well. They are tonally recessed, yet picky and unnatural. It makes the timbre take a huge hit in my opinion. Although the instruments sound mostly engaging and fun. Regarding the treble region, I tend to find their tuning clockwise tilted with a slight V-shaped tendency. And although the treble region is not very boosted, just slightly, when a song asks for it, it can pack an incredible amount of detail. The highs are kind of smooth sounding, not necessarily due to its amount. Something else must be affecting it, because once again, it is unlike anything else I have ever heard. And that's a common thing with this product. Technical performance is where the e-prototype flexes its muscle the most. I would assume that its proprietary technology makes it like that. Let's start with the sound separation. It's ideal. The instruments, vocals, background stuff, Everything is exceptionally well separated and doesn't blend much, no matter how loud or busy it gets. Detail retrieval is at an astonishing level with the treble amount we have. They are truly squeezing the most out of it, and I like it. These are some of the most resolving IEMs that don't get very sharp. The soundstage is neither accurate nor wide in any direction. No matter what you do, it's pretty intimate, which is not a bad thing in itself. The vocals have the potential to sound as if someone is singing right next into your ear. Well, that is what you usually call an intimate experience, right? The dynamic range of this IEM is impeccable. It can hit, punch extremely hard. It tends to be rather a point of impact than a slam wall. It sounds very fast, yet slow. Let me explain. The punch is there, but there is something that comes right after the punch. A super long, detailed and satisfying delay that is just impossible not to notice. Timber. It's not the biggest selling point of this product. Well, it's not a selling point at all. The e-prototypes tend to make things sound off or slightly plasticky, likely because of the shell's material. It's not terrible, but if you're a timber chaser, stay away from these. 